Now, structurally speaking, RNA, which is short for ribonucleic acid, looks very, very much like DNA with two major differences. First of all, RNA has hydroxy groups, these OH groups, at the C2 position of each ribose sugar in its back. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Why does it have deoxy in its name? Well, it's because DNA lacks the two prime hydroxyl group found in RNA. Second, you'll notice that where DNA has th as its complementary nucleotide base to adenine, RNA substitutes uracil in thiamine's place. Thus, in A pairs with T, and in RNA, A pairs with U. In both DNA and RNA, G pairs with C. Functionally, DNA has to remain intact throughout a cell's lifespan. RNA, in contrast, is formed and used and then recycled transiently in the cell when needed. Why? Because RNA's primary role is to serve as an intermediary between DNA and making proteins. That's it. So why does DNA really lack a 2 prime hydroxyl group? Well, as it turns out, having a 2 prime hydroxyl group makes a nucleic acid relatively unstable. Here's how. As we can see, in RNA, we have a 2 prime hydroxyl group in the sugar phosphate backbone. Because of that, if that RNA is exposed to base, even mild base, this kind of rearrangement can occur. The base grabs the hydrogen off of the 2 prime hydroxyl group, dumps these electrons into the phosphate phosphorus, and thrusts them up onto the oxygen. This then closes and kicks off this group, which then in turn uh, steals the proton back to protonate this 5 prime hydroxyl group. This generates a 2 prime, 3 prime, prime cyclic phosphodiester shown here. What's the whole point of my showing you this? Well, the point is this. RNA's 2 prime hydroxyl group makes it easier to cleave apart RNA sugar phosphate backbone. Uh, DNA does not have that 2 prime hydroxyl group, which is necessary to prevent DNA from decomposing similarly. Hence, the deoxy part of DNA's infamous. So let's see if we can hit some example questions. Okay? <laughs> Here's the first one. If one of the strands of DNA has the following sequence of bases running in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction, can you tell me what is the sequence of bases in the complementary strand of DNA? I also want you to tell me what base is closest to the 5 prime end in the complementary strand. Here's a second question. Why do both thymine and uracil specify the incorporation of adenine? Now, I hate to spoil things for you guys, but I'm actually not going to answer these questions here in this video presentation. For that, you'll have to show up to class. <laughs> now, I have to pause here to point out something that I'm sure you guys have already figured out. We scientists name everything. And we don't just give stuff simple names like Pete. We give stuff big hairy names with lots of syllables. So let's look at these compounds. You'll notice that they are nothing more than just the nucleotide bases I introduced you to earlier, except that they're bonded to ribose sugars. Do you think that we scientists give these compounds their own specific names? Of course we do. We're scientists. We name everything just to create more stuff for our students to have to memorize. In fact, I named every raisin in my breakfast cereal this morning. OK, so there are three different commonly used terms that confuse the snot out of me when I was first learning this subject. These terms are nucleotide base, nucleoside, and nucleotide. It turns out that each of these terms are actually referring to something different. I just didn't know what the heck that difference was. Now I do, and I'm going to explain it to you. So when we make reference to a nucleotide base, we are just talking about adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, and thiamine, just by themselves. A nucleotide base is any of these compounds by themselves, not bonded to a ribose sugar or a phosphate backbone. A nucleoside, in contrast, is a nucleotide base bonded to a sugar. And you guessed it, these compounds are called nucleosides. So if I have any of these nucleotide bases that are bonded to just a sugar, 
We no longer call them nucleotide bases, we call them nucleosides. Nucleotide bases, once again, are adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, and thiamine. Their nucleoside counterparts are called adenosine, guanosine, cytidine, and uridine in RNA. And in DNA, they're called 2 prime deoxyadenosine, 2 prime deoxyguanosine, 2 prime deoxycytidine, and thymidine. A nucleotide, in contrast, which is a little bit different from a nucleoside, is a nucleotide base plus a sugar plus a phosphate group. When all three of these elements are bonded together, we call that type of molecule a nucleotide. Now, nucleotide names are pretty simple, really. We just take the name of the nucleoside from which it came, add a number which corresponds to which carbon on the ribose ring the phosphate is bonded to. And then we add the term monophosphate, diphosphate, or triphosphate. So this nucleotide right, is called adenosine 5' prime monophosphate. This one is called 2' prime deoxycytidine 3' prime monophosphate. So once again, if we took the phosphate off, this would be a nucleoside and this nucleoside would be called adenosine. Because we've added a phosphate, and the phosphate happens to be stuck to carbon 5 on the ribose ring, we call it 5' prime monophosphate at the end, with the adenosine at the beginning of the name. I hope that makes sense. If this molecule over here did not have this phosphate group, it would be a nucleoside, not a nucleotide. And the nucleoside that it would correspond to would be 2' prime deoxycytidine because it does not have a hydroxyl group here. On the because we add a phosphate group, and it happens to be on the 3' prime position, we call it 3' prime monophosphate at the end, and leave the corresponding nucleoside name, 2' prime deoxycytidine, at the beginning. Now, although it's not used to store or transmit genetic information, like DNA or RNA, ATP is also a nucleotide. Its full name is adenosine 5' prime triphosphate. Once again, you can see that if we took away these phosphates, this would be adenosine, the nucleoside. Because we've added a triphosphate group onto the 5' prime position of this ribose sugar, its full name is adenosine 5' prime triphosphate. Now here's a chart that shows the full names of the nucleotide bases, their nucleosides, and deoxynucleoside counterparts, and their corresponding nucleotide and deoxynucleotide names. I hope that clarifies the concept of nucleotide bases, nucleosides, and nucleotides for you. It's a clarification that I personally wish that I would have had when I was an undergraduate first learning this stuff back in the day. Now we've come a long way today. I hope it's been as long, <laughs> I mean as fun for you as it has been for me. So let's take a break and then we'll come back shortly to tackle the second and final half of this chapter on nucleotide chemistry.